tell me what's going on for you today. How could I help? Um, basically, I have a couple questions about when to start studying for the LSAT, um, what would be good tools to start studying for it, um, and basically what to do to prepare for it. Because I'm finishing up my third year at community college and I'm transferring out this year. Um, so I have about two years, two and a half years before I graduate and then go to law school. So I don't know what would be the best like window of opportunity to do everything. Yeah, sure. So the first step is choosing an LSAT test date and deciding okay. when you plan to apply in general. So I assume you're planning to apply in the fall to start the following fall. Okay, great. So yeah, you've got plenty of time. I guess my question for you would be, when do you think you'll have the most time available to study for this? Probably would be the summertime. Um, I'm very busy throughout the year with school and everything um, going on at the same time. And I want to say the summertime, I just need to make sure that I'm disciplined enough to like not go and have fun and make sure I'm studying for it. But Totally, I'm totally. Well, if you've got the summer, the good news is that you could study for the LSAT during the day and then have fun in the evening or study mm -hmm. more on the weekdays, have more fun on the weekday, weekends, however you want to break it up. And studying over the summer, I think is a good way, good way to go. You have two, three months where you really focus on it. Then if you start school again in the fall, you could dial it down a little bit and then take the LSAT in October. Or you could even take it in August and study really intensively over the summer. I typically recommend five to six months to reach your fullest potential, but you could theoretically do it in less time and you could do a little bit of lighter studying now, then ramp up over the summer and take it in August or take it in October potentially. Okay, and what would be the best way to go about studying? Um, I don't know if I should get like course material, if I should sign up for um, a course, so they have like LSAT prep classes, things like that, or if it sh I should take like the pretest and work my way around that. Yeah, sure. So this is pretty much what I've devoted my entire career to is helping mm -hmm. students self-study for the exam. So I have a ton of resources on this. My courses are for self-studiers. I have detailed day-by-day -day study plans showing you exactly what to do every single day over the course of your prep. So I'll, I'll tell you which books to read, which articles to read, which videos to watch, and then which specific LSAT prep test questions to complete out of the actual official exams. Gotcha. Okay, great. Um, a lot of the worry that I've been having is people um, who are in like the same year as me or uh, a year older than me have been starting studying for it and they're taking classes. And um, I've been asked like, oh, have you started looking at logic games and things like that? And I was like, no, I haven't really looked at anything. I'm not sure what to look at. Um, so that's been my biggest concern. I don't know where to start exactly. Yeah. So the, the day by day study plan would be the best place to start because it'll tell you day one, week one, here's what to do. And I'll tell you, read these articles, watch these videos and so on, then complete these exact specific logic games out of the exams. And when you open an exam, you'll see a previously administered test form in full, but they're not categorizing things for you. They're not breaking it down for you. So that's what I do. I'll tell you, start with the easiest ordering games, then move on to tougher ordering games, then easy grouping, tougher grouping games, and so on. And so, I mean, you haven't chosen to start yet, so it's fine that you haven't. You don't need to necessarily spend an entire year studying for this like, like, like I did back when I was prepping for this. You could do it in three months. You could do it in six months. So whenever you choose to begin, that's fine. I would say, since we're speaking in March, maybe you want to start studying in May if you're, have your finals are done by then. Then you study really intensively May, June, July, August, September. Take it in October. You're giving yourself five months, plenty of time to reach your fullest potential. And if it's going well for you, you could potentially take it sooner. Or you could, if you have the free time now, you could dip your toes in the water a little bit and then start more seriously when the semester's over. Okay. Um, how many times would you advise taking the LSAT? So ideally, in theory, you would take it one and done and rock it, be finished. Realistically, a lot of people do retake either because something is a little bit off at their test center or there's a digital LSAT tablet tech glitch of some kind, or maybe you just think, hey, I could do better. And I think, you know, you could do better simply through luck alone. Maybe there's a margin of error where you do two points lower one day, three points higher the next day, totally fine. But the good news is that law schools do not average multiple LSAT scores. 
they only consider and take the highest. They'll say they consider multiple, but really when the calculations are done, they're taking the highest. That's what goes in for the rankings, which is what they care very much about. So you could take it in October, then take it again in November. All you've got to do is stay fresh on the LSAT for another four weeks. And if you do better, amazing. You might, might get more scholarship money. You might get into a better school. And if you don't do better, if you do worse or the same, no big deal because you're still walking in with the highest. Okay. Um, and how soon would you advise like taking it? If I'm going to be applying um, a year before I want to start. So if I want to start, I think it was 2023 at law school, um, I'd start my applications 22 in fall. So when would be the best time to test for it just to make sure that I'm like in the window to submit everything? Whenever you're ready. I mean, you've got, your scores are good for five years. Okay. So you could take it this fall mm -hmm. and then apply two years after that if you want to. Doesn't really matter. It's totally up to you. It's whenever you're reaching your goal score, I would say. And if you study this summer and it's not where you want to be, you could take a break and come back to it later. That's totally fine. Or if you have other things going on, you don't even have to start right now. There's no reason you need to take the LSAT two years before you want to apply. Most people don't. Most people take it the year they're actually applying. But I think planning ahead is always good. That way you have more chances to retake if you need to. Okay. So I was, that's the biggest thing that I was concerned about was if I don't get the score that I want, um, I want to have as much time possible to be able to test um, up. And I was thinking maybe like a year and a half would be ideal. So I didn't want to wait till the last minute because I have a really bad habit of doing that. So I was going to start studying um, around this summer and just kind of like looking at everything and uh, looking at some tests. I like just looking at the questions. Um, I was wondering about what the tests would actually look like. Like, is it mostly logic games? Is it, I'm not really sure. <laughs> I'm yeah, sure. So you'll get, you'll get into all of this, but just to give you a brief overview, You've got one section of logic games, two sections of logical reasoning, one section of reading comprehension, and then one unscored experimental section that could be any of those three types I previously mentioned. Okay. They don't tell you which one it is. It doesn't count towards your, towards your score, but they're using it to simply test out future questions. So you're sitting there for five 35-minute timed sections, four of which count, and then that's the scored stuff. Then there's also the writing sample, which is no longer done at the test center. It's done online later. So you could do it later that day, later that week, a month later, if you want, whatever. I wouldn't worry too much about that, but really you're working on games, logical reasoning, and reading comprehension. Games are the puzzles, which of course that are most notorious. Then you have logical reasoning, which are short bite-sized arguments. Then reading comprehension is passages that look on the surface similar to what you might have seen on the SAT or the ACT, but they're more focused on arguments and the structure of the arguments rather than on the details or the substance. Okay. And would any um, classes, as far as like college classes uh, go, as, oh, how do I word this? Okay. So I've already taken like a few law classes um, because of the degree and the certificate that I've earned at my community college. Would the classes that I've taken there, like paralegal studies or things like that, help at all? Not really. Not really, to be honest. And the, the LSAT is not testing law at all. So reading, learning law, reading law won't really help you very much, except for the fact that reading dense, difficult text does relate to the LSAT because the LSAT is testing your ability to navigate those arguments, to navigate complex, wordy passages that kind of are very roundabout and getting to the point and using more difficult vocabulary, and using long run-on sentences, and going on tangents here and there. And so you want to get used to reading in that way. And so any class that has you do that could be useful, like maybe a philosophy class could help in that way. I wouldn't take any particular college class for the purposes of LSAT prep. I think you're much better off focusing on actual LSAT questions. And so if you, let's say you were going to take five classes, I wouldn't add on a sixth class for the purposes of helping with the LSAT, I would just spend that time studying the LSAT itself. You've got nearly 100 released LSAT exams previously administered available to you. And that's more than enough material for the vast majority of people. But since you personally have a longer timeline than most, I would say you could start studying relatively earlier and dig into some of those older released exams just to get a sense of what's involved 
without burning through valuable recent release material. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. And as far as applications go, um, what would be the ideal amount of schools that I pick? And um, I know when I'm doing like undergrad applications, they always wanted us to have like a reach school, safety schools, and then uh, like backup schools. So what would be the best um, number to pick from in order to do all of that, make sure that I'm like in a safe zone as far as my scores go? It's really up to you. I mean, there's not much downside to applying to a lot of schools except for maybe the occasional supplemental essay you have to deal with or slight wording variations in the questions they ask related to things like character and fitness in particular. But I think most applicants tend to apply to somewhere between eight and 15 schools. Anywhere within that range, I think would, would be perfectly reasonable. And of course, as you said, you do want to have some safety, some target, some reach, and how you choose those will ultimately come down to your numbers, your GPA score, your GPA and your LSAT score neither of which is fixed at all at this point. And so it's too early to really look at where you would be realistic. Of course, you can set goals. You can look at schools that appeal to you. But until you have both of those numbers and certainly at least one of those numbers, it's really all theoretical. Okay. I already do have a goal school in mind. Now I'm like considering a couple um, backups that if that one doesn't work out, but that's the one that will want to work out. Um, and I need a score of at least a 170. Um, to fall into range because it's an Ivy League school. Um, so since I have that set, uh, what's the best way I can go about like making sure it happens? <laughs> it's funny. I actually just taught a class titled Inside the Mind of a 170 Plus Scorer. And this class, I go over exactly what the mindset is that is required and how you want to be looking at the test. So I would highly recommend you check out that class. It's on the YouTube channel take a look at that because I go in, into detail in terms of how to think like the test makers, how to break down and analyze the problems. And since you're just digging into this, I would of course recommend that you focus on the basics first, build your foundation in the different question types. Then you'll get more out of watching or listening to that class. But I would say for you right now, if you want an Ivy League, you want 170 at least, then you're going to want to give it more time than others would. So I'd say definitely closer to that five to six months at least to reach your fullest potential. And then that's where I'd start. And then, of course, in the meantime, really, what, what year are you in college right now? Um, I'm finishing up my third year at community college. So when I graduate this year um, and I start at a four-year, I'm going to be going in as a junior. So then I'll have two years there. Okay. So you've still got a couple of years remaining. So I'd really focus on maximizing your GPA for now. In the short term, keep your GPA as high as possible. This is not the time to go ex explore like organic chemistry if you've never expressed an interest in that. Stay away from anything that could really hurt your GPA that's not truly necessary. Of mm -hmm. course, take things that interest you, but keep that GPA up because it is such a largely numbers-driven process, especially relative to undergraduate admissions, which is really much more holistic. And law school admissions will say they're holistic, but when it really comes down to it, it's highly, highly numbers-driven. So short-term, max out your GPA. And then longer term, aim for the highest LSAT score possible. And so it's not too early to dip your toes in the water a little bit if you want to, if it interests you, and to build a basic familiarity in, what, in what's involved. Again, using those older exams and then moving progressively towards the newer ones. Okay. And as far as like extracurriculars and things like that go, since you mentioned like the holistic review, um, are there anyone specifically that would help? Because I've been in um, and like captain of mock trial, debate team, like anything related to law school, I've been in it. Very cool. I mean, that's, not, that's certainly nice to have. It's not necessary. Doesn't give you a huge boost. I think what really, if, if it interests you, what you might do as an internship or a part-time job here or there is to get some exposure to actually working at a law firm, okay. to get direct experience of what it's the actual practice of law is like. Because mock trial is cool, but it's theoretical. And most lawyers end up not being trial lawyers, right? Even if you want to be, that's great, but most end up not being that. And so if you can show them that you have an actual exposure to what the practice of law is like, you mentioned a paralegal certificate. So if you ever work as a paralegal, even for a short period, that would show that you have real world on the ground experience at a law firm. And so that your experience of the law is not solely based on mock trial or media portrayals. They, they always like to see real world legal experience. You don't have to get it if it's not practical for you. But that is certainly a nice to have and probably the biggest extracurricular, I would think, that helps your application even just a little bit. Okay, 
I will definitely look into that because I hadn't even considered that. I was thinking more of like uh, government internships and things like that that I've done. But okay, I'll definitely look into that. I think that's all the questions that I have today. Awesome, Tanya. Well, I'm really glad we connected. Of course, please keep in touch and let me know if, how I can help in any way moving forward. But before, before we sign off, what would you say is the biggest insight you got from our calls today? Um, I think it's just how the process goes and how to go about making sure that I make the process work in the way that I want it to work. So I want to get a certain score and I want to make sure that um, the work that I'm doing reflects upon that. So I've now learned how to go about that and to make sure that I'm, um, like you said, like maximizing my potential. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.